Welcome back, everybody, to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we just finished talking about the jumbled up cluster that currently is the middle of the pack in the MLB right now, with 14 teams currently being between uh, 34 and 39 wins right now, nine of them being in the NL, and how that might affect the uh trade deadline coming up in just about a month. We also talked a lot about the NBA earlier in the show, kicking off our show with the first big trade of the NBA offseason, with Alex Caruso being traded from the Bulls to the Thunder in exchange one for one for Josh Giddy, something that I don't quite understand. Maybe there's something that I'm missing there, but that feels like a crazy move to make for the Bulls. Uh, we talked about J.J. Redick officially being the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, a move that I think could work but also might backfire spectacularly. And we also talked about two new deals, two new max extensions that got signed in the NBA. Pascal Siakam signed a $189 million max extension with the Pacers, and Malik Monk signed a $78 million max extension to stay with the Kings. In this segment here, we're going to finish off our show, as we always do on a Friday, with our MLB power rankings. There might be some new people here at number one, uh, but before we get into that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Appreciate all of you guys for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to get into our MLB power rankings here. Uh... And as you can see uh, from our power rankings, we have a uh, a bunch of changes at the top. We're going to start at the bottom, though. Uh, start with the White Sox here. White Sox, the bottom five still have stayed basically the same. And the way that I'm kind of looking at these power rankings right now, as I was saying in the last segment, there's lots of teams in the middle that can kind of get moved around. But the bottom five and the top 10-ish, uh, are probably pretty much set. Now you can you can make a little bit of an argument around seven to ten there, but the bottom five I think are definitely set. The White Sox, the Marlins, the Rockies, the Athletics, and the Angels. Whatever order you want to put them in, Athletics and Angels, maybe you can switch, but those five are pretty clearly the worst five teams in the MLB right now. Uh there are there are uh, you know, a lot there's a lot of things going on with those franchises, and none of them are really good. The White Sox might be one of the worst teams of all time. The Marlins have nothing going for them. The Rockies, the Athletics, and the Angels all have their own management issues going on. So it's uh, it's kind of a mess down there. At 25 and 24, we have the Rays and the Blue Jays, both teams that, you know, in theory should be good. They have the rosters to be good, but they've just kind of fallen fat, flat. Rather, the Blue Jays have some underperforming players. The Rays as well also got hit with pitching injuries, and that really hurts them. The Tigers are cooling off. I have them here at 23. After a hot start to the season, uh, they're falling back towards the bottom of the pack there. The Pirates and the Nationals and the Cubs kind of grouped together there at 22, 21, and 20. Like I said, the Nationals are one of the hottest teams in baseball right now. They move up a couple spots. The Pirates continue to stay pretty consistently where they are. And the Mets at 19. They are 8-1 since Grimace threw out his first pitch. They are the hottest team in baseball right now. And if they can keep this wave going, maybe they won't end up trading all of their guys. They are right on the cusp of a playoff spot, half of a game out right now, tied with the Pirates and the Nationals. We will see what happens. They just beat the Cubs in a series, which is why, or just the, they just destroyed the Cubs in the first game of the series, winning like 11-2, to or it was 11-1 to before a, the show went live. Uh... They dominated the Cubs earlier today, uh, so they go up a spot on them at 19. At 18 and 17, I have the Reds and the Giants. Both teams, again, in that mix, you can throw the Diamondbacks in there as well, uh, in that mix for that NL wildcard spot. The Reds and the Giants kind of 
lagging behind just a little bit. They had slower starts to the season. The Reds have a lot of young talent that's starting to show, and the Giants, kind of the opposite, have some of that veteran leadership that's pushing through this hard time for them. They are getting better and healthier, and they are starting to make a push. I expect both of them to add at the deadline. At 16, we have the Diamondbacks, and their offense has started to go. Corbin Carroll has hit near 400 in his last couple games. Uh, You know, the pitching is still hurt. Uh, it's not where you want it to be, but as long as the as long as the hitting is still there, uh, they will continue to climb on this list. The Rangers at 15 continue to fall, though. They're kind of the opposite. They're also hurt, but their bats aren't ha- haven't been carrying them the way that we expect the way we expected the reigning champions to do. The Cardinals and Astros are there at 14 and 13. Uh, the Cardinals are currently sitting at the top of that heap of the NL in that wild card spot and the Astros are kind of clawing to being in contention this season. They need to pick up the pace soon, but both of those teams have a lot of upside and I expect both of them to add. The Astros just tossed uh Jose Abreu. It was about time. He was one of the worst hitters in all of baseball just above Martin Maldonado of the White Sox. Uh, at 12, we have the Red Sox, who finally seemingly broke out of that mediocre st- uh, stretch that they were in. They ran wild against the Yankees. They set a new uh, re- they set a new franchise record. The Red Sox have been around forever. They set a new franchise record for steals in a game. I believe they got to 10. Uh, but they are one of the fastest teams in baseball, and they're good at staying safe on the base paths. Uh, that's something that some of these other fast teams cannot say. So I have them there at 12 as they continue to be on a little bit of a win streak of their own. The Padres, I have at 11. They drop just out of the top 10 uh, because they lost a bunch to the Mets. The Mets are on their war path right now. Uh, so they, they drop just one spot. The Royals have been struggling. I contemplated putting them one spot uh, lower below the Padres, but I'm really high on this Royals team. Bobby Wood Jr. is an MVP candidate. Uh, Him and Gunnar Henderson are playing for that award right now, and I'm really curious to see who's going to pull that out. He is keeping them in the top 10. The Twins at 9, they get Royce Lewis back, and he has been everything you expect Royce Lewis to be and more there at number 9. You know, the pitching's been a little bit of a disappointment, but the bats are going, and as long as they continue to go, uh, this Twins team is going to go as far as those bats take them. The Braves stay put at eight. They've kind of been treading water since the injuries hit them, uh, since especially since the Acuna injury. They need to start to pick up the pace. They're starting to get caught up by the rest of the teams in the NL, and if they want to stay above that, that dog pile, they need to start to speed up up uh at number seven we have the brewers uh again they they get they're also keeping steady i have them drop one spot because what the mariners have been doing on the pitching side is awesome uh it's a little concerning that uh julio rodriguez hasn't picked it up yet but i do believe he will be able to get it going and once that goes this mariners team the sky is the limit they continue to expand their lead in that division over the astros and the rangers number five we have the guardians and i think there's a clear top five in the league the guardians stephen kwan is hitting 400 basically Stephen Kwan doesn't hit for a lot of power, but his ability to get the ball in play and get it to the open spot is incredible. It's hard to hit 400. That's why we never see it. And he is someone that is flirting with that number right now. His bat to ball skills are insane. And him getting on base for Jose Ramirez behind him is really setting the table for that offense to explode. At number four, we have the Dodgers. And truthfully, they would have climbed if they hadn't been hit with the injury bug. Uh, Yoshi Yamamoto and Mookie Betts are both out for a significant amount of time. They are a very, very good team, uh, but having them at four, uh, they've been there for the last couple weeks, and they definitely would have climbed this week, I think, above the Phillies at least, if they hadn't been hit with those injuries. The Phillies, the pitching kind of struggled a little bit. The bats still haven't gotten all the way there. They fall down to number three. The Yankees fall down to number two. We have a brand new number one. 
Uh, the Yankees fall to number two here in our rankings. They've been sitting atop the power rankings for the last couple weeks. Uh, again, injuries hit them. They do get Garrett Cole back, but the real reason we dropped them down is because they just lost a series to the Orioles in pretty convincing fashion. Now, the first two games were close. Uh, one went into extras, but they lose 17-5 to in the next game, and the Orioles and Gunnar Henderson move up into the number one spot in the power rankings. This is their first time being on top of the power rankings. We've had the Dodgers, we've had the Phillies, we've had the Yankees, and now we have the Orioles for the first time number one in my MLB power rankings. They absolutely deserve it for what they've been able to do this season. Uh, it's it's going to be... It's, it's, it's going to be fun to watch these two teams battle. Right now, the Orioles are half a game back of the Yankees in that division, but they did just beat them in a series, so I cannot put them uh, below the Yankees right now. I'm very excited to see what happens at the deadline. I think the Orioles might add a closer, and that's something that they desperately need. They can't keep prod trotting out Craig Kimbrell if they want to be a uh, World Series, if they want to win a World Series right now, especially with the way that the AL is set right now. But... Let me know if you have any uh, major gripes with my MLB power rankings here. Uh, but anyway, we'll be back next Monday with uh, all the uh, all all the all the biggest news around sports. We do have a Stanley Cup final game tonight. I think the Oilers. I really want them to go seven, try and get that reverse sweep going. But I think the Panthers might end it here tonight. Uh, but come back on Monday. We will talk a little bit about everything that happened in the NHL along uh, and everything else that's going on in the world of sports. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.